Welcome back to Mysterious Goings On. Hey, it's me, Alex Greenwood. So glad to have you back with me as I uneasily shift in my chair here. A little, little sore still. It's a Wednesday. I'm recording this a Wednesday, April 17th in the afternoon, and I am still not recovered from my half marathon from Saturday. Pleased to tell you that the... Uh, Half marathon had its ups and downs, uh, training as well as doing, but I got through it and did it in just about 11 minutes and change over my uh, previous. So I didn't beat my previous record. I was over by about 11 minutes, but I'm a couple of years older, had some training uh, challenges and uh, a knee injury. So all things considered, I did way better than I thought I would. I just had a really good time finishing the race. But I was going to talk to you a little bit about that today, uh, about how competitive I am with myself and that's I think a good thing in a lot of ways I was thinking about how running is very much a solitary thing for most people I think there are groups that help you train for a half marathon or a marathon where you run in groups and you pace the same pace time so say you want to finish a half marathon let's say in two hours and 20 minutes you run at this pace and you run with this group and you stick with this group throughout the half marathon. I saw those groups and I shadowed a lot of those groups during my run, but I'm, I'm a pretty much a loner when it comes to my workouts and my running and that kind of thing. You know, I enjoy a kickboxing workout and a kickboxing gym and I, there's others around, but it's just me versus the bag, you know, and when it comes to running, it's often the same thing. It's me um, versus my, my limits and my endurance and it was just interesting to, to think about that during the run because when you get in trouble, there's people around. Obviously, if I had a heart attack or something serious happened to me, of course, there's people around who can help. But you're kind of on your own. And it reminds me, you know, after great people cheering us on on the sidelines, uh, you know, with signs that say worst parade ever and that kind of stuff, you know, and, and there's live music throughout the, the course. And I mean, Kansas City really does a great half marathon with the Rock the Parkway, I've got to say. It's really great. And other runners, you know, and there's camaraderie there. And um, you kind of get in with your your wave time and with people who are more or less at your fitness level. So you kind of hang around those folks throughout the run. In my two hours and 30 minutes of it, I got to know a few faces and a few behinds and that kind of thing because you just got to stare at the same people, you know, over and over. And then you might overtake them and then they stare at you for a while and then it changes. But I pretty much... Uh, within a few miles knew who I was going to more or less finish with. But uh, get to mile 11, I'm doing all right. I've got an app that's telling me where I am in the race and what my approximate finish time will be, and I'm very pleased. And right up till almost the 11th mile, and that's a, a half marathon is 13.1 miles, by the way. I was getting up there, and the I get around the mile 10, it said that I was actually on track to finish within a minute or two of my my personal record which was like 219 and I was freaking out so happy about that I get to mile 11 and right after I cross the the demarcation for mile 11 I feel something in my left leg it's my calf and it's it's weird it's 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 almost like a uh, like there's a snake under my skin well it's not it's it's my calf muscle moving itself independently of me if that makes sense and it's the creepiest feeling ever because you realize your calf is cramping and, oh, and I said, that's not good. And I took a few more steps and then my right leg did the same thing, the right calf. So both calves are on fire and cramping up. I have to stop. I get off the course. I'm leaning against a tree, squeezing on my calves, doing stretches, just saying, come on, guys, just come on, just another mile and a half or so, another couple miles, really. That's it. I promise. And we're done with this thing, you know, and, you know, I just did the best I could with that. I, I was hydrated. I had, uh done everything I think I was supposed to do, but this old body was just saying no. Well, I managed to get going again, loosening up the calves enough to uh, get to the finish line in uh, two and a half hours, basically, two hours 30 and some change, which again was about 11 minutes and change over my uh, previous record, and I was fine. It was so great, but I got to say I was, I was in a lot of pain, and uh, I'm officially retired. But thinking about that and the individuality of and the competition with oneself of of running is a lot like writing when you think about it. I had a very good friend who is a great runner. He's very good and he runs all the time. And I remember telling him a few days before the race, I was like, well, I think this year is going to really suck for me. I don't think I'm in shape. I've tried to get in shape, but it's not been very good. And, uh, you know, and I, I don't want to be embarrassed. And he just said, 
you do understand you're really not in competition with anybody but yourself. I mean, he just said that. And he didn't, you know, he wasn't making fun of me or anything. He said, but dude, you're not going to win this race. You know that. And I was like, well, of course I know that. That's ridiculous. I mean, I'm not, no. I mean, no. But he says, then what are you worrying about? Just run your best race. The only competition is with yourself. Most people your age can't even run a 5K. And you're going to complete your third half marathon of your life at your age. Well, not that I'm ancient, but I'm older. I'm middle-aged. Hmm. And that really sunk into me. And all of a sudden, it made me feel a lot better knowing that. That, you know, the competition is with me. And my goal doesn't have to be to win. It doesn't even have to be to beat my personal record. That would be gravy. Because he had said to me, you know, personal records are a thing of the past at our age. And he's right. He's like, you know, just finish. Well, so think about that with writing. You know, you've got to be a self-starter to be a writer. There's no pace groups. If there are... That doesn't work for me. I'm not a big fan of the November writing month where you post your word counts to the world. And, you know, I'm not a real big fan of like, look at me, I'm a writer. Here's what I'm doing. I I don't do that. And I'm not knocking people who do. If that's what it takes for you to finish, great. I just have to look myself in the mirror, you know, in the morning when I get up and I know I've got to crank out a thousand words or whatever it may be. And I know that look in the mirror in the evening when I'm brushing my teeth and I haven't done it. Trust me, there's plenty of evenings where that is the look. And it's not a pleasant look from myself to myself. But I have another friend who's a writer. He's not a runner. He's a writer, though. He volunteered that writing's not a competition. And he said, no, it's not. It's not. You're not competing against other writers. You're competing against yourself. It's the same thing. If you, if you think about the duality of it, running and writing. I say this because if you're not a writer and you're a reader... And you wonder what motivates writers sometimes, you know, especially writers like me who don't make a ton of money um, doing writing, who, who does inner, inner competitions here and there. That's not exactly what we're talking about, about writing not being competitive. But do I sometimes get a twinge when I see a competitor, a uh, competitor, see, I almost said competitor. Do I get a twinge sometimes when I see a fellow writer, especially when I know putting out more work than I am or definitely making better sales than I am? Or winning a contest or something. Yeah, sometimes I feel that way. But it's not because I, you know, begrudge them getting that gold, silver, bronze medal, so to speak, you know, in the writing race. Just as much as I don't begrudge people who, you know, the thousands, literally, there's over 2,000 people who did better than me in the half marathon. I don't begrudge them that they're better runners than I am and they're in better shape, but it doesn't matter because they weren't competing against me and I wasn't competing against them. It's the same with the writing. When I see another writer who's successful, there's always a twinge here and there. Not always, but there's often a twinge and it's like, oh, but it's not that I'm like, oh, they suck. They don't deserve that. It's more like, am I doing enough to make this happen for myself? Often the answer is no, but not always. There's sometimes when uh, I'll tell you, there's, you can do everything right. You, you can make very few mistakes and still lose. It's, it's, that's not an original thought. That's life. You know, so writing, much like running, is a competition with oneself. But what I love about being competitive with myself is, though, I do take inspiration from other writers who do well, who write more than I do and win more awards or have better sales. I I look to them, they inspire me to do better. And just like I look at other athletes, and I'm not really an athlete, but for the purposes of this conversation, I look at other athletes and when they do well, it encourages me and I admire that. I admire any human being who was incredibly good at what they do. I admire that people who aren't necessarily naturally gifted yet still successful at what they want to do, make it even more. And that's, that's pretty great because I am not a natural runner. I do all right, but I'm not really a great runner, but I do my best and I do better than, as my friend said, most people my age. I think I'm, I don't know if the word gifted is right for writing. I'm a good writer. Occasionally I write something that I think is really great. I don't publish anything unless it's good. And when I say good, I mean commercial and readable and, you know, not not something that's going to make people uh, throw eggs at me when they realize they paid for it and they don't like it. I, I, recognize, I recognize, though, that the harder I work, the better I am. 
And therefore, that whole thing of competition comes to play in the conversation. So there have been more than one time, though, that I've had like brain cramps. Instead of in my calves when I'm running, I'll have cramps in my brain. And I realize that maybe I'm writing something where, especially in the John Pilot Mysteries, after I, you know, I've already done six books now, am I repeating myself? Is John growing as a character? I think he is, actually. Is he growing in a way that everybody loves? No, no. John is a human being, and he's going to F up some stuff. And people around him are going to F up. Because no, you know, I I have a very good person in my life who uh, is a therapist. And he says, you know, you're not, he told me this. He says, Alex, you're not a good person. And you're not a bad person. You're just a person. There are aspects of you that are not as desirable as others. There are aspects of you that you, you should work on. There are aspects of you that are really, you know, for want of a better term, good. But I love the fact that um, humans are shades of gray. And, you know, I don't write Mary Sue characters, and I, I don't find characters who are perfect interesting. That's It's just it's the reason I'm more attracted to Batman than Superman, I think. Superman's boring to me because he doesn't really have very many flaws, Batman is riddled with flaws. I think Batman's way more human than Superman. Of course, Superman is actually not human, so okay, spare me the fan mail on that one. But I'm just saying, I hope that makes sense to you. And incidentally, Batman and Superman are kind of competitive with each other, though. That's interesting. All right, well, that's just been me rambling a little bit about competition and running the race. And whatever race you're running, whether it be athletics, whether it be writing, whether it be painting houses, whatever it is you do that sets your sights higher and gives you a sense of satisfaction, if it doesn't hurt anybody else, I'm all for it. And I hope that maybe this little meditation on competition was helpful for you. Don't forget, you can check back and look at some great episodes we've had recently with uh, other writers. If you want to hear about the writing life a little bit, I did two episodes recently with Eden Bailey and Jason McIntyre. Just look on iTunes for mysterious goings on and you can find them or go to pilotscross.com and you can find stuff there. There's also some information about new book covers and I've got some ideas that I want to run across with you. Run across. See, I'm thinking about running again. I have some ideas I want to run by you, which is what I was doing on the race. I was running by a lot of people moaning and groaning about my calves. So I want to run some ideas by you on our next episode. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about appealing to the crowd and finding ways to Make something special with a little help from my friends. So until next time, I'm Jay Alexander Greenwood. Thanks so much for your time and for listening. And until we meet again, keep reading. It's hosting season, and this hosting season, you can enter eligible New York Lottery draw game tickets with Collect and Win for a chance to win a $5,000 gift card to use at the Home Depot. So enter today and make one of the most stressful times of the year a little easier. The Home Depot is not a sponsor of this promotion. You must be 18 years or older to purchase a lottery ticket. You must be 21 or older to purchase a quick draw ticket where alcoholic beverages are served. Please play responsibly. Enter by 1720. Hi, it's Jamie, Progressive's Employee of the Month, two months in a row. Leave a message at the... Hi, Jamie. It's me, Jamie. I just had a new idea for our song about the Name Your Price tool. So when it's like, tell us what you want to pay, hey, 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 and the trombone goes, blah, 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 and you say, we'll help you find coverage options to fit your budget. Then we just all do finger snaps while a choir goes, savings coming at ya, savings coming at ya. Yes? No? Maybe? Anyway, see your practice tonight. I got new lyrics for the rap break. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law.